All right, it's hot in Hawaii, so I got the fan on, but it's time for more 100th Monkey Rant. <laughs> and today's edition will have uh, copious and uh, <laughs> spurious use of sound effects. I'm going to use them uh, to the best of my ability. So, let's see here. Point one is the pharmaceutical companies with their crazy three billion dollar fine GlaxoSmithKline and then whistleblowers coming out and then uh, selling, saying that you know Merck falsified data and there's, I mean there's so much, do you know how much, how egregious your trespass must be for them to fine you three billion dollars and what do we get for the mainstream media? Uh, uh, as usual, uh, uh, nothing to see here, it's just a three billion dollar fine. Three billion dollars! Uh, and on and on. I mean, they had a banner week. They had whistleblowers coming out. They had they were showing falsified data. They were, these guys losing documents with American Glaxel Smith Klein, and then they're using you know paying doctors to use drugs when they shouldn't be using them, and all these doctors. And then they had this one report that it was like eighty percent of doctors are on the take, and they know they're on the take, and they're still doing. And what do we get? And see, see how. Uh, because they're owned, the mainstream media is owned by the bankers and the pharmaceutical companies. So see, now the, when you get right down to it, you got to understand the bankers own it all. They own, and they want it all plus five percent is as the story. But they own all the oil companies. They own the, the major stakes and major shares of all the oil companies. They own all the pharmaceutical companies. They own most of the Fortune 500 companies. The the grand percent of shares is uh, theirs. So, of course, uh, and uh, among those Fortune 500 companies would be all the media outlets. So, do you think they're going to give you the news, right? They'll give you Whitney Houston, they'll give you Lindsay Lohan, they'll give you O.J. Simpson, they'll give you, name it. You know, they'll give you any kind of entertainment, they'll give you sports, they'll give you anything. But they're not going to give you an in-depth report on how you got a $3 billion fine <laughs> for this one pharmaceutical company. Uh, they're not going to tell you about autism. They're not going to tell you about 911. They're not going to tell you about, uh, name it. Just name the topic. Anything that you need to know or that would be good for you to know, they're not going to tell you about the uh, NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, and how that affects you. They're not going to tell you about all the different things that are going on with FEMA. And they're not going to tell you that all the different nefarious plans that our government has. And they certainly aren't going to tell you about the LIBOR rate fixing thing. Right? There's another an, another one. I mean, this is huge. <laughs> They're fixing rates. That's a it's an eight hundred trillion dollar market. I try to thousands of billions, <laughs> thousands and thousands of billions. And when they move the market just one percentage point, that would be huge. Just one basis point, point zero zero one percent works out to billions and billions of dollars. So when they're knocking the rate down, and don't think that the United States wasn't aware of that, don't think that our treasury and our bankers weren't part of that, because they absolutely were. Because if you're thinking that, oh, you know, our bankers didn't know what was going on, sorry, they knew what was going on. They absolutely knew what was going on. And it's, it keeps our dollar looking good when you keep those rates fixed. Now, when they were doing everything they can to make those banks look solvent and so forth and keeping the rates low. Now, what happens? They're going to try and tell you, oh, keeping the rates low gives you a lower mortgage. <laughs> uh, what we have here is the mortgages, yes, it's true that you would get a lower rate because they're the lending rate. But you know who else gets a lower rate? Anybody on a fixed income gets a lower rate also, right? Who else can you think of that would be uh, getting a lower rate? Uh, can you say pension programs? Uh, how about municipalities? Uh, how about cities? Yeah, all of those guys are getting lower rates too, which means that they can't get the kind of rate of return that they need to fund, like, you know, keeping your library open or, uh, you know, making it so that you can retire at 65 and get the benefits that they promised you because they can't get the safe rates of return that they're supposed to get because these guys have rigged the rates so low. And that means, what are you going to do? Take the money and put it into the stock market. Right? Because you want a higher rate of return, then you're going to have to take greater risk. Because the safe investments, the quote-unquote safe investments, aren't getting the rate of return because they've rigged these rates to be so low. Do you get it? And see, the problem is most people don't. Now, you need to go out and see, and this is the Ron Paul people. The Ron Paul people understand economics because they'll sit down and read. Uh, the average person, like the average Obama supporter, 
A, doesn't understand any of this. B, when you tell them that, you know, the drug war has been escalated, they're, 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 they're dumbfounded. They're, it's like, you mean they've escalated? The, no. Under Obama, they haven't. Uh, yes, they have. And they're going after the biggest clinics now. Uh, and where, who's, who are the ones that are trying to get it so that these people can fight these, these Republicans? Right? Ron Paul and, and uh, Barney Frank, give him some credit. And then a bunch of other Republicans. But where are all the Democrats on this? And then it looked down in Texas where they're trying to make it where they, they want to have, you know, GMO labeling Republicans. Yes, they want to have GMO labeling. They want to have, the, you know, the ability to buy raw milk. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? The ability to buy raw milk? Oh, what would happen? I think, you know, cats and dogs will be sleeping together next. They want to, uh, you know, get rid of the TSA. That's crazy talk. Anyhow, the, the idea is that we need... Uh, not just that you got to get if you're progressive you need to get progress past the left right paradigm because like over here in hawaii there's this lady named tulsa gabbard she's a democrat 100 percent support this woman right also a veteran also anyway just look at look look at it and she has money like a lot of my <laughs> a lot of friends are like i don't know she got a lot of money doesn't that make her the status you know candidate and I, and I, but I still pick her over all the other candidates that are out there because just look at her positions. Look at her positions on war. Look at her positions on torture. Look at her positions on, you know, the TSA and tourism in Hawaii. Look at it, you know, the stuff, issues that matter to us here in Hawaii because I can guarantee you the TSA is not making tourism easier and better here in Hawaii because people don't come because they have to go through that silly, you know, theater that they call, you know, it, it basically, what are they doing? They're, they're frisking you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a circus. And most people can see right through it that this is just nonsense. And that it's not keeping you safer, right? Take off your shoes. Here, let me warn you. You guys, you guys are just silly. Uh, but who wants to get rid of the TSA? That's a Ron Paul idea. That's a Republican idea. Why aren't the Democrats on that? People hate the TSA. And because, because that's the most egregious and firsthand ability for you to see the, um, or what's the word I'm looking for, but the, you're, you're, it's in your face that your rights are being violated. The more, uh, you know, stealth things that they're doing uh, aren't, aren't quite so in your face, but the TSA is in your face. But there's plenty of other ways where, that they're robbing you of your rights. And this is the thing, as, as some people have pointed out, is that they can't take your rights when you get right down to it, because if they're inalienable rights, they're your rights. And they can try and legislate, they can try and do all kinds of stuff, and the only way you do, the only way you allow them to quote unquote take them is if you let them. So you need to, you know, people understand when they stand their ground and they demand their rights, because ain't nobody going to give you your rights. When, they, when you demand your rights, they usually, usually will acquiesce. Sometimes you have to take it to court, but usually just right there on the street. If you know your rights and you're talking to a police officer, a lot of times they're not going to mess with you because they realize that a citizen armed with the law can cause a lot of problems. I was reading this one hand... Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But I was reading a handbook that was written for for, a co for cops by cops. And basically what they were saying, what the guy was saying is, look, if you violate people's rights, you're in for a world of hurt. Simple as that. Because if the person, the citizen knows his law, then you're liable and you, you know, your salary isn't going to cover the fines and they'll wind up taking your house and you won't have a car and all this other stuff. It's an interesting handbook. But most people, you know, seeing what they count on is most people will not whip out their camera and if they try to take their camera they'll be you know they'll cow and you know or th that people will you know that they just don't know their rights but consistently when it gets in the court the courts have upheld the judges have upheld that you have a right to, to film the cops but that's like i said a whole other issue let's get on to the whole thing about plurality in uh the delegate counts in five states uh, there's more links down there and Ben Swan talking about it and so forth. Ron Paul's on the ticket. They can tell you anything they want. But, you know, it, it, the, the bottom line is Ron Paul is going to be nominated for president, and I don't know what's going to happen. He may not win the nomination. He may not, he may not be able to, uh, you know, pull it off because we've got too many of the delegates rigged from, uh, you know, all the other states. But there's quite a few stealth delegates and if Romney is not probably going to make it on, the, on round one. And then there's going to be a lot of politicking, and it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. And this is the way politics is supposed to work. It's not supposed to be the presumptive candidate, and they ram a candidate down our throats named Romney. Uh, so I'm hoping that you people that can make it down to Florida will make it down to Florida, because there's going to be a huge rally, and I guarantee you there's going to be more people at that Ron Paul rally than there are um, going to the RNC. 
And then when we get the people in the RNC, again, the delegates need to be uh, well informed and understand that, you know, party platform and, you know, all these different things that delegates get to vote on. It's not just about nominating a, uh, you know, presidential candidate. And then the thing is, if we don't get the guy in there, you know, if we get all the way down there and everything happens and then it winds up being Romney, <laughs> when we, you know, we wind up losing, the, at least we gave it a fight. But the thing isn't over until such time as the vote actually takes place and the Republican National Convention happens, as far as I'm concerned. And we've got a long way to go and a lot of stuff to do uh, between now and then still, actually. And in the meantime... You know, securing paper ballots in, in wherever you are, in your county, in your municipality, in your precinct, precinct, so that they use paper ballots and not voting machines. That's a huge task right there. Calling your congressman to, about the auditing the Fed bill. Um, that's another huge thing that needs to happen. Uh, hemp bills that have been getting out there. Support that. There's so much that you can do between... I mean, people like, oh, the liberty movement's done once we get Ron Paul in there. Even if we got Ron Paul, I've said this over and over again in video after video, we've got lots more stuff to do than just put Ron Paul in as president, right? We, we've got so much to clean up, it's not even funny. And people don't seem to understand that this LIBOR scandal, many, many of these bankers have broken laws. I mean, it's they've committed fraud and perjury and all kinds of naughty, naughty things that need to be addressed, and these guys need to go to jail. Take a look at what they did in Iceland. That's what is effective. These bankers need to go to jail. It's not, they, you know, they have the president on there saying, oh, they didn't do anything wrong. They just, you know, they, they just uh, basically, you know, we're trying to make money and so forth. Uh, no, they did stuff that was wrong. They did stuff that was illegal, and we have laws in place to keep them from doing the things that they did. Now, uh, and those laws need to be enforced. But see, this whole thing about, oh, we need more regulations, we need more government. Well, the bankers are in bed with government, so the regulations that they write now are in their favor. They changed the bankruptcy laws. They changed, you know, they, what they want is monopoly. What they want is to keep competition from happening. So in every, you know, whether it's, you know, pharma keeping marijuana illegal or oil companies keeping marijuana illegal or, you know, whatever it is, what they do is write regulations in order to uh, keep these, you know, competition to a minimum so that they can form monopolies with the government. It should be pretty simple for you guys to figure out, but it seems that it's not. And I get into arguments that are, you know, on Facebook and stuff like that. I'm just amazed that the Obama supporters are unable to see that, yes, Obama has stepped up the drug war. Yes, he's, he's stepped up other wars. Yes, he's put more, you know, drones out there than any other president before and is getting the technology, you know, uh, perfected so that they can use it inside the United States. Do you think for one minute, do you really think for one minute that if they're going to use these things on uh, kids in Pakistan that they wouldn't use them eventually for kids in, uh, you know, Florida or Texas or wherever the hell it is? Really? Because you're silly. I mean, the, you, I never thought I would see the day when we would have any kind of debate whatsoever about uh, whether or not it, you could force me to buy insurance, right? I, there should be no, there shouldn't even be a question. They went to the Supreme Court? Are you freaking kidding me? That, <laughs> right? And then, and then there's like, oh, it's a, t and then it find, turns out Obama may have a little bit more knowledge of the Constitution than he thought. And he just lied to you, lied straight face to you. It's not a tax, but he wrote it as a tax. So that it would pass the muster of the constitutional, you know, the, is it constitutional or not? The guy's clever, right? And then we find out that, that these guys are like, okay, it's not a penalty, it's a tax. Now they can tax you for, for action and non-action. Excellent. We need a guy like Ron Paul up there that will actually get in there and, you know, repeal some of this stuff. Um, because it has gotten scary what our government thinks that they can get away with. So what needs to happen is the people in the liberty movement need to wake up as many people as they possibly can. And one of the ways you can do that is just by, uh, seriously, just posting information all over the internet, right? Making sure stories get heard. Because you see this down here, that, they, that, that when it came to the LIBOR scandal, the mainstream media put zero time in like two weeks. They didn't even put a second of time into the scandal explaining it to you and how it affects you. Um, but it's all over the internet. 
there's plenty of stuff for us to do, my friends. And the liberty movement is just in its beginning phases because people are starting to wake up and realize. Obama supporters are starting to wake up and realize. All right, Romney supporters are starting to realize. Hey, wait a minute. So what needs to happen is more and more people need to find out about you know Austrian economics and Ron Paul and the whole liberty movement and why we're upset, <laughs> why we want the republic back, and so forth. And the way you do that is by talking to people. And you don't, you're not going to win any friends by you know just fighting all the time and being you know you, you need to add a little humor and a little bit of goofiness and so forth so that they can see that you know you're not just angry white people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get out there and get going. We're going to have a great time. Uh, I'm not going to be there, but in uh, Florida at the Republican National Convention, there is going to be some fun stuff and fireworks. Look forward to it. See you soon. <laughs>